Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and the Wait For Godot 4.5 got one step closer today, because we now have Godot 4.5 Dev 3. Now I'm going to go through the details of what we got in Dev 3, there's about three major new releases, well two and a half, I'll explain why in just a second, uh, and then a bunch of other minor things as well. These are not huge releases, because these are iterative releases that are building up towards the beta and then final releases of Godot. So these are the ones that add new features to Godot, eventually we will get to the beta phase, and then we will have a feature freeze and then we will get into release candidates. So these are very early on adding new features and functionality. We'll get back to the details of the Dev 3 release, but first I want to do a quick recap of what we got in Dev 1 and in Dev 2. Now in Dev 1, uh, we got a couple of nice new features. The biggest ones are, the big one in my opinion was this one right here. Uh, it used to be that each tile in a tile map had its own collision polygon. This was uh, resources intensive. Now we've got the ability to actually automatically generate uh, one collision polygon for like multiple tiles, a huge optimization if you are using tile maps. On top of that, uh, in Godot 4.4, they added a very Unity-like game preview that you can embed inside of Godot when your game is running. Uh, in the 4.5 release, they gave you the ability to mute that game while it is running. Also, the ability to uh, multiple select objects in the game window, so you can select multiple different things and like transform them, remove them, or interact with them, or so on. Uh, and then on top of that, we got the drag and drop of resource UIDs. Another thing that was added in 4.4 and really being built upon. Uh, and then in Godot 4.5 Dev 2 release, uh, we got a dedicated 2D navigation server, reorganizations to the shader editor UI. Uh, you can now change the editor language without requiring a restart. We got uh, fragment density map support for uh, VR rendering optimization. Your Linux users out there, you finally got Wayland native sub window support, which was I think the last major feature missing from the Wayland implementation if you wanted to move away from X11. And then several other smaller fixes and improvements. So that leads us on today to Dev 3. By the way, before we go there, I want you guys to know about something. There is a bundle going on specifically for Godot users. I'd love to see people moving their stuff over to Godot. Uh, Lortes Studio is definitely one of the earliest to do this. Uh, what they've got in this pack, and at first this price looks kind of awful. 50 bucks uh, for five packs uh, and then some discount codes, etc. But the truth is you use the code SN40, it knocks $40 off. So this is actually $9.99 for five asset packs, which is actually a pretty sweet deal. It's studio licenses, so that means you can have up to 11 users using it. Uh, and if you do use my link, it helps to support the channel. So I very much appreciate that. So we're actually gonna have one of these, the stylized pirate port open in the demo as we go on. So there's also two other bundles going on for Unity and for Unreal Engine. So if you wanna go through the effort of porting those over to the Godot engine as well, there is a ton more content available in these bundles. They all have similar discount codes. So make sure you use the code SN40 at checkout, drops it down to $9.99. Okay, so we're going to jump into Godot now. This, again, uh, Dev 4.5, Dev 3. We'll come back to the release details in just a second. But here we are. This is Godot um, 4.5, Dev 3. This is one of the packs, by the way. This is the pirate pack. So it gives you an idea of what these assets are like. Entirely modular, which is very, very cool. Now I'm going to show you something, in my humble opinion, much, much cooler. This is something that was added. It's a small thing that was added in the Dev 3 release, but it's my favorite new feature by far. So let's say I came in here to my world environment. And then you notice here, all of these are quite simple. There's no, there's no bloat here anymore because I'm not using them. So let's say I wanted to use uh, global illumination. So uh, sign distance field global illumination here. You notice now I actually have this checkbox over here. Whereas before it used to be just like this. These would all be like expandable and you'd have to navigate through each one. Well, now if you're not using it, it doesn't show up. So watch this. I'll hit the checkbox. Boom. Now it shows up. They're all available there. Don't want it? Click there. Want it? Click there. I love this. It's a small thing, definitely a small thing, but I very much appreciate what they have added here. Now, there's another thing that has been added in here as well. Uh, this is the half feature, because uh, basically this might be user error. You know, sometimes when you're dealing with these new projects, uh, there's no documentation or very little documentation for how to get things going. But what they've done is added stack tracing in. So if you come down here, debug, like so, here, and they have these two new options here, uh, always track call stacks and always track local variables. Now these will actually enable you um, to trace out where you are in your GDScript code. And they've done an optimization so that leaving stack traces enabled is actually viable now. So you can actually have debug code writing a log basically saying, 
This occurred here in this particular function. And stack tracing is determining where you are in the hierarchy. It's a way that you should be able to debug where your GD script code went wrong. The problem I have is the actual example, it doesn't run for me. So I don't know what's going on with that one. Again, it might be user error or it might be something that did not make it into the dev three release. We'll get into more details of that one when we get uh, into the release notes uh, in just a second. Now we've got one last feature to show, or should I actually say to tell, because uh, this one is all about accessibility. There's actually a 30,000 lines of code that made this happen. But basically, if you uh, have vision impairment issues, uh, this now will work better with screen readers. So uh, this is not an area I have a lot Note of experience scan. with. Narrator window heading level one. But Welcome here you can see to narrator. the narrator. This is narrator home, OBS 31.0.1, profile, scan off. Port city, debug, window, pane, section, sky, button, section, property, sky, button, assign resource, sky, button, off, assign resource, sky, space, menu, sky, menu item, to quick load, menu item, load, menu, space, menu. And now let me get rid of pane. the navigator. Uh, space, space, menu, space, menu, port city, system tray over, no, turn off, exiting narrator. All right, first off, I'm going to have you say, I'm very happy that I don't have to personally deal with that. I can, I really, my heart goes out to anybody with vision impairments that have to navigate a computer using uh, that kind of features and functionality, but the integration is now there. Hopefully you have a better control of your navigator than I do, so your narrator, so it's a better experience than what I just showed. But yes, there is better accessibility support inside of the Godot engine, opening up the editor to a larger community of people. So again, here we go. So the first thing we've got now is that screen reader support that was just added. This was using something called uh, Access Kit. It was integrated into Godot. This started off two years ago, uh, featured over 32,000 lines of code, hundreds of comments and feedback testing. So do it, go ahead and check this one out. Uh, again, it's going to be very niche in terms of the people that this is for, but for the people that it is for, it is going to be a gigantic um, opportunity because it just opens a door that was not open before. So uh, new accessibility support for screen readers built into Godot in the Dev3 release. And then here's the thing I was talking about earlier on, it's just I can't demonstrate it to you properly because for some reason this script underscore backtrace function simply isn't being like it's just not available for some reason. So I don't know if it's a me thing, if it's a build thing, or what. Uh, could be a user error, but the idea behind script backtracing is very cool. So first off, what they've done is they've optimized the way that backtracing actually works. So you can see here uh, two different functions. So function one calls function two. Function two has the backtrace print in it, and you'll see the stack. So since it's ready calling function one, which calls function two, what you should see is ready function one function two. So you can see it, the layer or how deep you are in the stack. Now you can get this using the debugger at any particular time, but the problem is using a debugger, you need to stop and look at it and so on. This allows you to basically just log it in the background. Tracing is a very powerful uh, debugging tool, especially when it comes to scripting language. Uh, so you can at any time print out the script backtrace. But the other part of this is they've also turned on the ability that you can have it always on. You can actually have it um, so stack traces are now available in projects exported in release mode if that setting is set and enabled. That is very cool. So if you want to, uh, you could send out a build of your game to a number of friends for the full release version, not debug, no debug signals in there, but still have them be able to send you a log if something goes wrong. And then they also changed the way that um, the stack traces are done so that it's actually faster. So you can actually go ahead and leave these back traces on and it won't cause an issue. So this is going to be a game changer for a lot of people. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, this function is unavailable for me, and I don't know if it's user error. These settings are, so this is in there, and the other one, because I showed you them in the demo, but for some reason, when I try to add this in GDScript, it just doesn't exist. So I do not know what's going on there. Uh, again, possibly user error. If you know what I did wrong, let me know in the comments down below, or if it's just missing from this build, hey, that's the nature of dev releases. And then again, I mentioned this one earlier on, the inspector uh, section toggles. I love this. This is my favorite new feature, um, buy a country mile. Again, it's very simple, but if you are not using functionality, click and get rid of it. You add something in, boom, it opens up and it expands out. 
I love this. I, it's, it's like one of those little refinements to the UI that just improve the way that you work with the tool. So it's a small change, but it is a change that I very much am on board with. Uh, and then beyond that, a number of other changes here as well, uh, smaller fixes and improvements. Uh, so there is quite a bit in this particular release. Uh, and yeah, so you got a total of 115 contributors, 253 fixes. Uh, you can check out the interactive change logs for the full details of everything that's available there. And uh, the downloads are available on this page. I'll have this linked in the linked article uh, from down below. Uh, and once again, so this is the third dev release. So we've had dev one and dev two already. Um, these will all accumulate and eventually we will have a beta release and you should not use the beta release in production. So don't even think about using these dev releases in production. It's a very, very bad idea, but they are encouraging. They show you where Godot 4.5 is going towards. Godot 4.4 was one of my favorite releases simply because it was full of things like this little change. Uh, and this is the kind of stuff that I absolutely love. So it looks like 4.5 is kind of going down that road as well. And then of course we got the uh, accessibility features there. If you're using a screen reader, big jump forward. And that stack tracing is going to be huge if you can get it to work. And hopefully again, it's just me. And if you know what's going on, let me know in the comments down below. And once again, a quick reminder, there is this bundle uh, for uh, Godot going on right now. You can get five assets for just $10 but do use the code SN40 at checkout. Otherwise you will be ripped off and I don't want to see that happen to you. So 10 bucks for five assets, that is pretty sweet. And we saw the asset quickly in action right here. It gives you an idea of what you are getting, what the environments are like. So you're getting five of these environments. They're entirely modular. So all of the, all of the bits and bobs that we are working with here, all the assets are available. So you'll see, um, like so easily instantiate them into your world. So it's uh, pretty nice in that regard. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Godot 4.5 Dev 3. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.